Thank you very much. Go into battle prepared to win. I don't care if you're an engineer, a school teacher, a pharmacist, a mechanic, a ditch digger, or you name any other profession. Go into battle prepared to win. I want to go through some, my life story so you understand where I come from, so you hear the whole thing. Ultimately, my goal is to have goals, be prepared for adversity, and fight through it. I want to tell you about I was raised by mom and dad. I had two older brothers, younger sister. I was raised in South Seattle. What happened was, for me, I came out, my older brothers were bigger, they were stronger, but I always wanted to compete with them at all times. Let's put it this way, my dad was one of them kind of jokesters that uh, one day I got a little froggy with mother and he explained to me, he goes, let me explain something to you, boy. I can't get another one of her, but I could dang well make another one of you. <laughs> So there is a hierarchy in the uh, Utley household. Okay, so be it, so be it. I, I, I get you, I get you. And from that point on, as a kid growing up, I always played sports when I was at, at, in, in Pee Wee sports. I went to St. Paul's grade school, private Catholic school, and we didn't have the contact sports at, at that time. So dad allowed, mom and dad allowed me to go out of my district and play for Rainy Beach Vikings. Okay, and so as I went down there the first time, my dad introduced himself to the coach and said, Coach, my name's Frank Utley, and my, my boy would like to play for you, sir. And I said, okay. He goes, son, do what I tell you to do it, when I tell you to do it, and how I tell you to do it. Do you understand? I said, yes, sir. And he said, uh, boy, what's your name? I said, Mike, sir. He goes, all right, John, get your butt with the rest of them. In football, there's a dictatorship, and I wasn't quite dictating anything at that point. And so from there, I went from uh, grade school. I played a few years in, in, in Pee Wee sports. Yes, you played basketball, you did the soccer, and, and so on and so forth. And I, I, I never understood what it was all about, why I liked football so much. Because I was a kid of the four kids, I was the first one to be with dad, and we wrestled around, did the rough housing and, and that kind of thing. And, but I was always the last kid to leave, hamming it up with dad and, and that kind of stuff. And it got to a point where I enjoyed the physical contact. And then it went to high school, went to Kennedy High School, another private Catholic school in uh, Berrien, Washington. Absolutely fantastic. Played freshman football, basketball. And then I served junior and senior, uh, ju yeah, sophomore, junior, senior at the varsity. And I still played basketball. But I did realize one thing. There, there's Michael Jordan's of basketball. I wasn't one of them. There's the Mike Tyson of basketball. Mike Utley was more like Mike Tyson than he was like an actual basketball player. And it, it, was, it was one of those things. It was great, had a good time with the sports. But then I had an opportunity to go around the country and investigate colleges. Absolutely loved it. And been able to investigate other coaches, investigate other um, uh, facilities, what the weight room was like, and it just got to a point where I understood as a senior in high school, having the opportunity to travel the country a little bit. But the one thing is, for me, my brothers, my sister, they were straight A students for the most part. I struggled. But my parents knew from grade school and through high school 
but I put two, twice, maybe three times the work that they put in, and I end up getting a C. That's okay. They allowed me to be rewarded with the time, energy, and effort that I put into it. Some of the examples people ask me, who was my role models growing up? You get a load of this one. Mom and dad. You don't hear that too often anymore, do you? My roles were my parents. And the reason why I say my parents, dad worked for Boeing for 35 years. Mom was an RN. She worked the third shift of every single holiday. She worked the third shift. So there was one parent home with us, four kids, at all times. They sacrificed to give us a chance to be here today. I believe in setting goals, but more importantly, I believe in the theory of a pyramid. You can never be on top with a good, without a good base. Mom and dad were our base. Even today, we chat with mom and dad. They're both together on uh, Maple Valley. And we celebrated my, my, my brothers, and we just celebrated my uh, parents' 50th anniversary. Still together. And they travel. Even today, I call up and ch I check in upon them. I asked them, where are they at? Oh, we're so-and-so, we're to the Ozarks, and we're doing this, we're doing that. And I get after my mom every chance I get because she's spending my inheritance. I'm not appreciative of that. But this is where I came from. And then from the ability to go into college, I, had, I broke my choices down to two places. University of Oregon with Coach Rich Brooks, and Washington State University with Coach Jim Walden. I debated back and forth. And then ultimately I decided to become a Cougar and went to Washington State University. Absolutely loved it. As you see, I sit up here in front of you today, I am still sporting a mullet, because in a private Catholic school, you're supposed to be clean cut like some of these guys in, uh, are up front here. That looks good on them. But as soon as I had the ability to get out of high school, I've grown up my hair out. Yes, I used to bleach it blonde, and I wore all earrings, and I did all that kind of goofy, silly stuff. But then when I was at, in college at Washington State University, I had this thing called freedom. And trust me, I took it full advantage of this opportunity. And again, I struggled with school but my parents put enough into me to make me believe in myself. I'm gonna tell you, my first semester, I didn't do so well. Second semester, I did even worse than the first semester. To be eligible to play in the Pac-10 at that time, to be eligible to be involved even in with the school, you have to have a minimum of 24 credits or thereabout. I was one shy. I went to summer school back in, it would be the 80, 84, or, uh, 80, 1984 to 85 that summer. So 85 summer. And I passed, and all of a sudden, right before fall camp in 1985, Coach Walden called me in his office, and he said, sit down. I sat down in front of his desk. He threw my transcript out in front of me. And he says, get it together or get out of here. I'm tired of dealing with you. I thought it was over right then and there. What I loved so much was gone. They were going to take it away from me. That's when I realized I need to get back to what my parents taught me. Believe in myself, set goals, and be accountable for my actions. Out of high school, I was 245 pounds, the heaviest I've been. To be in the Pac-10 
as, an, as a defensive lineman, being recruited as a defensive lineman, I knew you had to be 300 pounds. Even though I wasn't there, the first day I reported to WSU, I was 228 pounds. I got sick and I got food poisoning two weeks prior. Right then, I had to find somebody to help build me up back up again. So I started, I went and found a nutritionist. So that during that year when I was um, not doing my schoolwork, I became 300 pounds during that off season or during that season. And so 1985, I had a chance to start as a redshirt freshman at Washington State University. From being recruited as a defensive player, they brought me over and allowed me to be a guard. So I'd start as a right guard in 1985 for the WSU Cougars. I had to learn to eat between eight and 10,000 calories a day. Just, you, you know how you all feel on Thanksgiving? <laughs> I, ate every, I ate every meal like that. It is very, very uncomfortable. But what happened was, I started training myself to learn to eat every two to two and a half hours. To feed the system, you have to be accountable to the machine you are building. You put good quality food in, you get good quality effort out. This is another thing. I learned to set goals to eat. It's a full-time job. People don't realize that. You burn more calories in a day by cooking, preparing, than you would do in a running a marathon. That's just the way your system works. I played three years, under, uh, two years under uh, uh, starting for uh, Coach Walden. He was relieved of duty, and now he's back. Um, we got a new coach, Coach Dennis, Dennis Erickson. And he comes in and he cleans the slate. And offensive line coach comes in, Coach Greg Smith, one of my most favorite coaches of all time. Coach Smith brings 10 of us offensive linemen in together. And he goes, okay, what is it that you want out of this year? And he started one guy. Coach, I want to go to the Rose Bowl. Another player, coach, I want to go to the Rose Bowl and win it. Another, coach, another player goes, I want to, I want to uh, go to the national championship. Another player says, coach, I want to, I want to be an All-American. I want to play like an All-American would play. He keeps asking people. All of a sudden, he goes to one gentleman. He goes, what do you want? One player says, coach, I want to be the best I can be. Another player, I want to be the best I can be. Coach goes, I was the last one. Coach goes, what do you want? I said, honestly, sir? He goes, yes. Coach, I want to be the best. Why do you say that? Maybe on this given day that I play, on this given day, like I would go to the Rose Bowl, ain't good enough. Maybe the way I would play winning the Rose Bowl on this given day ain't good enough. Maybe the way I would play being an All-American on this given day is not good enough. Maybe the, on this given day, the, the best I can play ain't good enough. But if I go out there to be the best, I win every single time. What does that mean? That I look, in my, look at myself every day and become accountable. Do I give enough during the week of practice? Did I do well enough in school to be eligible? Did I eat enough to feed the system that I'm there? Did I not do enough studying? Did I not give enough uh, looks to my, uh, my teammate to win the next, to, for him to go against the other team? What did I do? Did I do enough to get to where I wanted to be? That's the way I looked at every opportunity as a ball player. I still look at that way today. 
I had an opportunity from there to go, and, and I got drafted. I was 59th player picked in the draft in 1989. It was Barry Sanders, John Ford, and myself. And to be able to come out, and when I showed up to training camp in 1989, I was 306 pounds. Seven weeks of training camp. We had the Hall of Fame game, so we had two, two weeks prior, and then I had five preseason games, 1989. I gained six pounds during training camp. For all those who know how hard that, that is, as a rookie, I was the only offensive lineman they brought in that time. I came out and started for the Detroit Lions. 1989, the fifth game of the season, a guy hit me four inches above my right knee and it shattered my right leg. I tried to stand and walk off the field three times with a shattered right leg. I was carried off by a thing called a rickshaw, being carried off the field. I made a promise to myself I would never be carried off again. Came back, third preseason game of the following year. I went and pulled. A guy hit my back, broke two of my ribs vertical. I was done four weeks, supposed to be eight. I came back, played the next two games of the following game season, and then I came back and started again. I'm blocking a guy. My own guy hits my elbow, rotates my elbow up, but the problem is my hand stays straight. The guy pushed my arm out of my socket. I'm done four more weeks. I come back, start again. I'm blocking a guy, a guy steps on my right foot, pulls out my right, another guy hits me in the right hip, pulls out my right hip. I'm done four more weeks. I know you're all sitting there, he ain't the brightest star in the sky, is he? <laughs> That's what my dad said. From that point, I came back, finished off the season 1990. 1991, 11th game of the season. First play of the fourth quarter, pass play. My guy went to put his hands up and went to take his legs out. He caught me on my shoulders, pulled me down, became a C5, 6, 7, quadriplegic instantly. My game and career was over with. I went into, I went into two surgeries, and the doctor said I'd never walk again. I told him to get the hell out of my room, don't tell me or somebody, you can't do something. From this point on, my philosophy of living and life has not changed. You set goals, pay the price for what you want, go on battle prepared to win. I laid there in the hospital. You don't know what a C567 quadriplegic is. I had no left tricep, nothing from the elbows down, no hands, no wrists, no fingers. I couldn't feed myself, I couldn't wiggle my fingers, I couldn't go to the bathroom by myself for six years. I had to have people transfer me everywhere I went. From this point on, I started in a van with a lift. I went from there to a Jeep that I could transfer into, to an ESV Escalade that was dropped two and a half inches so I can jump up into it. Now my wife and I have a truck that's 47 inches high off the ground that I lift my, and power myself up into. I have earned every single right to be where I am here today. One last thing. I want to talk to you about the Mike Utley Foundation. We started that in 1992 for one reason, one reason only. There was no place for anybody to go for information on what needs to be done, what people need to go, and where they need to go with related spinal cord injury. Number one thing about Mike Utley Foundation, research is number one. I want out of this wheelchair so badly I can taste it, as I did as a ball player. Number two is education. Not only is the person who sustains the spinal cord injury is affected the family and the community. Either you're going to be a productive part of society or you're going to be a burden. Mike Utley will never be a burden on himself, his family, or anybody else or your community. I promise you on that. But the third thing is rehabilitation. It is a lifestyle. You must continue setting goals for yourself, and then on top of the goals, you must take personal responsibility for your actions at all time. I have done that before I got hurt. My parents taught me to do that, and I'm gonna do it now. I am not gonna change my lifestyle because I am a spinal cord injured. It doesn't matter to me, never has, and never will. I can leave you with one thing. Do something today you didn't do yesterday 
Look in the mirror, see who you, who you are, know who you are, and make a difference by what you give of yourself today. You will create a pathway for people tomorrow. Believe in yourself, believe in this country. God bless you, and God bless America. Thank you.